Hi, Chris Bunce here, and as a tour professional angler and a guide for over 15 years on the rivers, streams, lakes, reservoirs throughout the United States, let's just say, and um, I have a little water background, and I fish daytime, nighttime, 24 hours. As a guide, you're, you're out there in all the elements, storms, snow, rain, whatever. I had to come up with a better knot system because the old-fashioned trialing knot we basically go through the loop twice and around six times and then back through the double eyelet and snug down just a little tough to get real quick and snug down and cut your tail off is a nice knot if you have daylight the trialing knot will hold and will last and it's recommended by Anybody that's ever tied a knot and likes to read books, and you got your bifocals on, you can do this in the dark. It's a really sweet knot, but it's strong. And it's actually about a pound and a half less tensile strength due to all the crimping and corners and all the metal binding that goes on in your eyelets. So it's a pound and a half less than your 10-pound model, which makes it 8.5 pounds. My knot that I've used all these years in guiding and tournament fishing, and um, you know how it is when you lose a jig, it's dark out, and you got to tie a quick knot again, but you can't see the knot. You can basically do this one here hands free. And like I do, I find a star, sunlight, a light on your boat, and I just find the eye of that jig. Like all jigs, you have to thread them twice through the hole. And the idea of threading them twice through the hole is so that water can get in there and it can rock and roll on there and it won't create friction. Friction will burn mono and eventually in long term if there's a burn here it'll cut fire line and crystal. This knot will work with fire line crystal even a rope. And you're basically just going through the hole twice and doing an overhand. And just push her through, hang on to the two loops and snug her down. Here's the cool part with this knot. Once you snug it down, pop it and you can pull it and center it and it'll always be center on your pull cord. So your lure will track natural as possible. The really thing is I like to do is, because it's mono usually leaders, I'll take and tie a second one down through over and thread the knot of the first one through and lock it down. And you want to get them kind of close, quarter, you know, quarter inch if you downsize this to be about right. That way if the fish or snag bites off one side, you're still pulling on a good side. And that there, when you cut the tag, if you get any debris on the line, or any pollen, it'll load up up here away from your lure. So that way your lure can keep doing its job and all the debris that hits your mono or your braided comes down, it'll stop short of your lure. So even though you have a clump of weeds on here, it can't get at the lure. The lure can keep working through most of that. That's one of the best kept secrets on the market. I've kept it for years for a guide, but as a pro angler, I'm here to teach the people. Let's get it done. Let's get us back on the water and let's start putting fish in the coolers.